And it's time now for some science news on the programme because there are reports that the way medicines are being produced is changing and soon perhaps drugs will be tailor-made for you and for your own genetic makeup. To talk about this, our health editor Julia Seeger is in the studio with me. And Julia, first of all, just tell us why it is that scientists are trying to develop this so-called new generation of drugs. Well, simply because the way that we've been designing uh, drugs in the last century really needs to improve and change. We need more personalized medicine to increase efficiency, but also to reduce side effects. When you buy a, ba a box of Tylenol or aspirin, for instance, the pill within the pill, there's the same dosage for everyone. And so the idea with this first generation of medicine was to say that everybody would react the same way, but we don't have the same DNA. We know today that genes react to certain uh, medicine in a certain way, and some drugs are actually completely ineffective um, because of very small, and they can actually be deadly, but because of very small details of how our body our bodies function. When it comes to efficiency, some pills uh, are also still taken orally, and that leads to a, a great loss of active principle, uh, especially what happens is we say in general that when you take a pill, about 80% of the of the active principle is going to disappear because it has to grow through, for instance, uh, the intestinal barrier. And so we have to cram much more uh, active principle into the pill than needed. Now, the second problem is what we call therapeutic compliance, the fact that only one person out of two is going to end, uh, go to the end of the treatment. And that's a huge problem. It's called uh, a lack of medical adherence. And uh, it costs the United States healthcare system, for instance, about 100 to $300 billion every year. The third problem is waste. Uh, we tend to have more pills in that box than we actually need. And then, of course, it expires and we throw it away. And that leads us to our fourth problem, which is environmental pollution. We'll find micro trace of those medication in our rivers, but also uh, in, in the rest of our environment and in our food. And so the goal with this new type of medication, this new generation, is tr try to reduce uh, the active principle to a minimum for environmental reason, but also for medical and toxicity reasons. And one example of an in innovation that is already being trialled is the on is is to try and reduce side effects. And to do that, we need to do genetic tests. Well, that's what uh, scientists in the UK have just unveiled, a genetic test that can actually predict how your body is going to react and whether or not there will be side effects. And that's actually part of a whole new discipline. It's called pharmacogenomics. So once you've done that and you've uh, uh, determined the side effects, you need to know how you're going to give the right dosage to each patient. And for that, 3D printed pills are really great. Uh, you're you're going to see it in the, in the pictures coming up. Uh, but um, the, the, you have layers of active ingredients that are being printed into a pill. And so uh, it can be done directly at the pharmacy and you'll have the right dose, but it's also a way to, uh, to reduce waste. Now, there's only one uh, medicine that's been 3D printed that's been approved by the, uh, the FDA that was in uh, 2017 and it's called Spritem. Now, Nadia, the next question is how do you actually get the molecule to the right place in your body and at the right dose? time. And for that, scientists have developed what we call smart drugs that can adapt to uh, the patient's body. So for instance, uh, these are, are pills that you're going you're gonna to take orally and that are going to diffuse in your body slowly, but they can also uh, see if it's the right moment depending on, for instance, uh, um, whether, uh, you know, the acidity in, in your body, for instance. And they can also travel in your body. This is something that we, uh, we've already seen in the science segment together, but uh, I think these, uh, these pictures are absolutely incredible. These are pills that can be monitored from outside uh, the body. They're soft robots and uh, they're hydrogel robots, as you can see here, shaped as a fish or a crab. And they're capable of going, for instance, and delivering a treatment directly to a tumor. You can see it going uh, within a vein there. So uh, it's quite mind boggling. But we're still on something uh, that you're going to take orally. And that's still a problem because when you ingest medication, it has to go through all these different organs like the stomach, the intestines and the livers. And that creates much more side effects. But there's a French company called Midancel in the south of France that has developed a, a quite an innovation. It's called a long-lasting injection. So the way it works, you have the active principle that's going to be injected, as you can see, right under the skin, and it's going to create a sort of lump. And then it's going to disintegrate again and release the medicine over a long period of time. And then it's going to completely disappear. So it's a technology that addresses many problems, as Midancel's CEO explains. This kind of injection helps to overcome one of the key weaknesses of oral medication, which is people not following prescriptions, the WHO's main priority. 
This is the key advantage of the treatments that we're developing. There are also other benefits which can vary from patient to patient. For example, a reduction in side effects because we can avoid the peak concentrations that we see with pills. Also, we don't pass through the gastrointestinal system or the liver, which can also help to reduce side effects. And in some cases, we can inject the product locally over time in order to avoid huge doses of medication going through the whole body. So, Nadia, this uh, technology is great, especially for pathologies that uh, where observance is key. I'm thinking about uh, uh, people who are suffering uh, from um, sch 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 excuse me, schizophrenia. 75% of patients tend to stop their treatment within a year, and we know that it's key because each time there is a schizophrenic episode, there's actually irreversible effects on the brain. Julia Seeger, our health editor. Thanks very much. Thank you.